What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Invest 96L that is in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. We have Invest 97L that has just been issued earlier this morning. That is on the coast of the Carolinas, off the coast of it, rather. And we have this tropical wave over here in the main development region that has piqued my interest over the last couple of hours. We're going to go ahead and go over all of it for you, ladies and gentlemen. But before we do, we're going to go ahead and start with the NHC and their latest advisories on 96 and 97L. Here's the latest from both. For 96L, showers and thunderstorms have become a bit more concentrated in association with an area of low pressure. Environmental conditions are expected to be marginally favorable for gradual development over the next few days, and a tropical depression is likely to form during the early part of this week. The system is expected to move northwestward at about 15 miles per hour and then turn northward and over the central subtropical Atlantic by late Monday or Tuesday. 50% chance of development in the next 48 hours, 70% chance of formation in the next seven days. So there is a likely possibility that this thing will be developing into our next Emily right here. And now we have 97L, which kind of popped off of uh, right out of everyone's radar right here. 30% chance of development already uh, as this issue with areas interest was issued at 8 a.m. this morning. So this is what we got right here. Shower and thunderstorm activity showing signs of organization 100 miles southeast of North Carolina. Environmental conditions are gradually favorable for some additional development as it accelerates that. Afterward, it is expected to merge into a frontal boundary. So we have a 30% chance of development in the next 48 hours. So that's definitely something we need to monitor as time continues to go on. As this is so close to the proximity of land right here, and we have to monitor that right here. So here's the latest we have of this area, these areas of interest right here. This is what we have going on with 96L. Thunderstorms, once again, I can see it on satellite becoming more and more concentrated by the hour. Same with this 97L right here. As for this thing right here, we're actually going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We're going to go ahead and go to the central tropical Atlantic right here. And you see this right here. You're starting to see some a few signs of broad rotation and better outflow over the last few bits. So I actually want to go ahead and go back about 60 frames, which is about 10 hours, to kind of see the evolution of both 96L as well as this tropical wave right here. You can see it's getting its act together. If storms are getting more concentrated, we're starting to see deep convection potentially in the center of circulation. And if that continues up, we could see another area of interest tagged by the National Hurricane Center right here. This area right here, 96L, showing easy signs of organization. We're starting to see more concentrated systems, uh, or rather storms near the center of circulation. So yeah, absolutely things are getting be uh, getting better. It is starting to it get over a bit of shear right here, starting to imp get impacted by some shear. So definitely something to monitor as time continues to progress. But for all three of these systems, for now, they're in pretty good conditions for development. We're going to go ahead and show you what's working for and against all three of these. What's easily working for all three of them is the ridiculously warm waters across the Atlantic Ocean. For example, where 97L is, it's in waters of 29 to 30 degrees Celsius or 84 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you who use the uh, the standard system. Where 96L is, it's in 28, 29 degrees Celsius, 82 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit over there. Definitely plenty of warm water to develop. And where this new area of interest is in, it's about well, not area of interest, but tropical wave that I'm personally thinking is going to be an area of interest. Um, where I'm looking at this, we're looking at waters of around 29 degrees Celsius or 84 degrees Fahrenheit right there. And if we go ahead and take a look at the OHC out of all three of these areas, where this tropical wave is, it's in an area near 100 OHC. Where 96L is, it's around 75, and where this new or 97L is, it's around 75 to 100 OHC, depending on the spot. So that's what we have going on with all three of these systems. The OHC altogether is what's really helping drive these systems for potential development. We basically see a, are seeing a much more expansive of area of ocean heat content across much of the Atlantic compared to where we were in 2020, right here. 
And that's really what's going to be driving these systems to start potentially developing. That's what's going to drive the convection to continue firing up if the shear does not get involved in too big of a way. So now we're going to go ahead and show you what's working against it. The shear forecast across much of it is working against 96L for now where the convection is right here, especially where we're getting up to 50 knots of shear and across a lot of these areas. But where this area is really going to be going, it's going to be encountering an area of around 25 to 30 knots or so. So that's going to potentially shear the system and may hamper its development right there. But something to monitor right there. The shear is expected to uh, decrease considerably, and we'll show you that when we get to the, that shear forecast. 97L in pretty good conditions, at least for where it's going right now. And then this tropical wave right here. Right now, it is encountering about 20 knots of shear, but it is expected to be moving through better conditions around 5 to 10 knots of shear as time continues to go on through the main development region. So that's why I'm monitoring this system right now. And now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear forecast as well as the moisture component. The shear forecast at least for the next 24 hours, continues to fluctuate, although in the MDR there is a bit of a downward trend going on. But starting about 60 hours out, we see much of the Atlantic Ocean clear of all, uh, of pretty much a lot of shear. We're starting to see a bigger trough move through the United States and potentially st uh, hamper some development in the short term. We'll go ahead and show you what we're looking at about four days down the shear completely collapses for now across much of the Atlantic. This is August 2nd right here, and this is 96 hours out right here. And then the shear does start to resurge quite a bit around August 8th, but then things continue that downward trend right there. So that's the shear. And I'd say if anything wanted to develop between August 1st and August 4th, it definitely could, especially that tropical wave right there, if we were going off of shear by itself. But another thing we need to take a look at is moisture, relative humidity. Where this tropical wave is in 96L is, there is okay, there's okay, not very much dry air, especially where this tropical wave is too. It's not really encountering dry air, and it's encountering moisture all, until it approaches the Lesser Antilles, which is why I'm monitoring it as closely as I can. Where this 97L is right here, it's in pretty moist moist air, so definitely shouldn't have too much of a problem developing on that front, although shear is the main concern with that. Dry air for 96L as time continues to go on, however... It is going to hamper it potentially a little bit as it does get intruded by some dry air over there, but that's something we'll have to continue to monitor as time continues to go on. Where this tropical wave is right here, where, right here, we'll go ahead and show you that. It's in this huge moisture uh, pocket right here that is continuing to travel west. So that's pretty interesting right, right in itself right there. So definitely some more tropics that we have to monitor. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some ensemble runs. We're going to go ahead and show you the G uh, European GFS and GPS ensemble runs right here, at least for the next little while. And then things, for now at least, the, G, uh, the European ensembles, they're not showing too much life for 96 or 97L, but based off of satellite and all the things that I'm looking at right here, I think at least 96L is most likely going to develop, and the NHC agrees with me on that front. Well, if it strengthens, most likely a tropical depression, maybe even a tropical storm if we get to that front, but that's pretty much about it. 97L, it's going to be, it's going to have to do it very quickly. But that's what I'm looking at right there. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the, G, uh, the GFS ensembles. Go ahead and take it back to the 0Z just to show you what's going on with that. And the GFS is actually having the system develop, strengthen into a tropical storm, potentially a low-end Category 1 hurricane, according to some runs continue, uh, continuing to call for that. 97L, there's not much I'm really finding on 97L, it, although it could potentially strengthen into a tropical depression before it merges with that frontal boundary, but that's what we're looking at so far. But still, considering what we're looking at right here, considering the shear it's about to go into, considering the moist air, considering all the warm water we have, is something we need to monitor. But with that being said, we're closing the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And if you want to come hang out with us at Storms United, feel free to join the Discord server right over there. But with that being said... Have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.